I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is Mia, and this is my life living in Nicaragua. Today we're going to do another deep dive into a failed attempt at moving to Nicaragua by one of my viewers. It is not a failure from us moving, because we moved successfully to Nicaragua, and it's been great, and a lot of people see that and think that it's going to be super easy for them. And for a lot of you, it is super easy, so I don't want to scare you off, but it is important to look at some of these people who have moved and who have failed to stay here and have not seen it as be a good move, so that we can learn from some of the mistakes that they made and hopefully make things a little bit more reliable for all of you. So let's get to that story right after that bump. One of the most important aspects of moving to any new country is having some amount of expectation setting. And that's something we try to do a lot of here on the show because a lot of people have expectations that Nicaragua is gonna be very different than it actually is. And for the most part, they have an expectation that things are gonna be much harder, more expensive, or just not as desirable as they actually are. And a lot of people are incredibly pleasantly survived. <laughs> incredibly pleasantly surprised when they come to Nicaragua and discover that it is a really nice, cheap, safe place and it is relatively easy to move to. So many of the things that they may have apprehension and worries about actually may never actually become issues for them and it can be a very simple place to make a very good life for yourself. But not everyone is gonna have that experience. But so on one side, we do want to make things seem as, as more realistic as possible, but it's possible to go overboard. And some people, see this and see our successes and assume that that will simply translate into a success for them. Sometimes that is true and sometimes it is not. So that's one of the reasons that we very much encourage coming down and spending at least a little bit of time getting to know the country. This could be like two weeks. We don't need a lot of time. And pretty consistently, every time we see someone having a failure, a total failure where they come in and really quickly want to move on, it is because they never came and did that initial just discovery. Just there's some things we cannot possibly convey to you uh, through these shows. The, the feeling in the air, the sounds on the street, the smells, the whatever it is, just the view driving down the street. We show the streets, we show the airport, we show the houses. We really do try to show as much as we can, but there are limits and it's just very difficult for anyone. I know for me, it is impossible for me to have a really good vision of what life will be like in a new country until I've lived there. Now, I'm very flexible. It's very easy for me to move to a new country and just discover that as I go. And no matter what it is, I'm going to be fine. That's fine. But for a lot of people, especially if you're moving permanently, right, if you're just going for, say, six months, you could put up with nearly anything. Oh, this is not the experience I was expecting. Whatever, I can put up with it for a little while and make the best of it, probably even enjoy it, especially knowing that I'm going to move on at the end. But if you're moving somewhere permanently and this is what you're going to live with for the rest of your life, or at least that is the intention, then those little things where you get here and say, I wasn't expecting it to look like that. I wasn't expecting it to work like that. I just, I had a very bad expectation. Even if you otherwise would really like it here, those little things are going to bother you a lot. In this particular example, one of the things that was a really big problem and that no one had anticipated was he didn't like the style of gyms that we have here in the country. He had taken the time to ask, what does a gym cost? And we had a relatively accurate price. Now, of course, he got gringo priced and did nothing to negotiate and set himself up to get bad pricing on that. Didn't go in with knowledge of what it should cost and just accepted double the price or whatever. So that hit him a little bit, still pretty cheap, but it was not as cheap as he was expecting. But he was expecting a different style of gym. There were as many gyms as he was expecting. He was about the price he was expecting, but the style of the gym, that it's one of the things that's very common in Nicaragua, gyms like homes have a tendency to be dark. People don't like bright lights, mostly because it's a hot place. People are outside most of the time. It's an agrarian society. And so because of that, and we'll talk about this in other videos, people have a tendency to like their home life, whether it's a restaurant or their actual house, their bedrooms, their living rooms, the gymnasiums they go to. They don't want bright lights. Bright lights mean using energy, creating heat. Those aren't things that people look to do. They want to escape that. They spend their whole day out in the sun. They don't need to see more light. If you're from Northern Europe, you have an opposite expectation much of the time. North America and Europeans, especially Northern Europe, have a tendency to want more light. They want to do everything they can to encourage sunlight because they spend a lot of their time in offices and even when they're home, there's not a lot of sun most of the time. Even in the middle of the day, there isn't as much sun as there is here, right? So they are constantly seeking more sun, but here it's more seeking to escape the sun in most cases. And that, that little bit of just the way that people tend to be, of course, if you're building your own house, do whatever you like, make it all windows, put in lots of glass, 
whatever it is that makes you happy. But if you're going to be using Nicaraguan gyms as an example, then expect them to be dark and relatively small. They're built, especially here in Leon, they're going to be built into colonial buildings. So they're going to be very space constrained and, and not very brightly lit and they're not easily air conditioned. So you're probably looking at just fans and, and fresh air. Things that if you thought about it, probably you'd say, oh, that totally makes sense. That shouldn't be a surprise. But to someone who is focused on gym culture and never occurred to him that we have lots of gyms and people use them all the time, but they are not bright and spacious the way that he was expecting really threw him off and that for him that was a major part of his everyday life and had he spent two weeks here just visited a gym or two he would have had a very different expectation and maybe just by having a different expectation would have had time to think about it and when he arrived been like okay this is what it's going to be or here's how I have to work around that and find a gym that's different whatever that would have been fine but because it was a surprise and he was entrapped with it it made it a really big emotional burden that he wasn't prepared for. Now in this particular example we can give some credit for his willingness to just jump in. He did some phone calls, he watched tons of videos, he thought that he had done enough that it was worth jumping in with both feet and just making a huge commitment to moving to a new country. Super, super admirable. That was a brave move, but ultimately I think it proved to be foolish and that was a mistake. Sometimes being overly brave it's a bit much. And a lot of people I see making this commitment to, we are moving to Nicaragua come hell or high water, and we're not necessarily doing the standard research of getting into the country and checking it out first. And yes, if you really know yourself, potentially you can make this work. And if you are really able to just move on and it doesn't matter, and you're like, well, why not just move my entire family and then just move on to the next place, if that's what uh, doesn't work. Those things are okay. So so Scott Moore from There's Gotta Be Something More, uh, who's currently still in Guatemala, uh, he is doing exactly that. It's just him and his wife, so they're very easy to move around. They wanted to move to a couple different countries, or may maybe several, uh, and try it out and just give it as long as they felt it made sense. So they came to Nicaragua and gave it about a year. They found it a little bit too warm and a few other things, and then they decided to move on to Guatemala, and they're super happy with the similar culture but lower temperatures, which is, of course, a pretty big vote for Guatemala for a lot of people. So they're enjoying that. But very likely they're going to move on from Guatemala. This has been their plan. So at no point did they come to Nicaragua and have this feeling they were stuck. They simply, you know, came, spent a few days, decided on the length of rental they were going to do and did, I think, a year rental. Uh, and now they're in Guatemala. I think they did a six month and now we're doing another six month and probably going to give it a bit more time because they're really enjoying it. But they're absolutely considering maybe moving on to a Peru or an Argentina. I'm not exactly sure which countries they're looking at, but I know those are some of the ones in their, in their scope. Uh, and so for them, moving to a place without really having been there first. For example, I don't think they'd ever been to Guatemala before moving there. Uh, it can work really well. They know it's safety. They know how to speak enough Spanish. They know they're going to be able to get around and deal with it for at least six months, which would be uh, kind of the minimum, minimum serious commitment for something like that. And if that's who you are, that's going to work just fine. But if you're doing a move where it is absolutely your final move and you feel like you're going to be quite locked in, there's a bit of panic that tends to come with that. And you need to be a little bit more sure of what you're doing. And I think that caught him here in this particular example. He only had experiences with places like Thailand and Costa Rica, and he tried to use those to extrapolate what Nicaragua would be like, and he got the temperature right. That part was not a surprise, but everything else was. The culture of Nicaragua was not what he was thinking it was going to be in any way whatsoever. Of course, Costa Rica and Thailand are vacation places. They're backpacker places. They're expat havens. So moving to those places, you're going to get a load of expats First of all, just expats around you, right? Lots of people who are temporarily living outside their home country. This is a kind of extended vacation for them. You have a huge amount of generally English speaking and definitely non-local residents or semi-residents uh, that you can hang out with. You can easily be part of a community that is non-local. That is the basically the expectation. Of course, both are big countries. You can also be in places that have no expats in both. Costa Rica is a little bit more challenging. Thailand is easy very big country. Uh, coming to Nicaragua, he found that to be a completely different experience. Everything that he knew from Costa Rica and Thailand, utterly different here in Nicaragua. It's not just the people, it's also the infrastructure. There's no expat infrastructure here, meaning there aren't apartments designed around expats. There isn't uh, restaurants designed around expats. So there aren't restaurants with air conditioning. I say that Leon just put one in. Summer has opened, but that is a rare exception and brand new. Uh, we'll see how long they last. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, you don't go to... Um, 
modern style apartments. If you go to Costa Rica, they're everywhere. Here, they're basically unheard of. Those little things can make a really big difference in like what your home life is going to be like, what going out to a restaurant is going to be like. Uh, he was caught off guard by the cafe culture. Nicaragua has very little cafe culture, and he found that the places that had the coffee that he liked didn't have the seating that he liked. And that's honestly a negative for me. I do not like the cafe culture here in Leon. I do like the one in Madagalpa quite a bit more, which is so a couple important things. I really like having really nice coffee with, you know, a, a big selection and lots of different options and, and variety, right? And some places like Cafe Aletheia down in Hinotepe, they got that spot on, no problem with the menu. But I also like to sit outside and people watch in the middle of the city. Well, that's something that we don't have here in Leon at all. Uh, Pan y Paz has like one table sitting out on a street. You could kind of, it's pushing it, right? I want a cafe like you see in Paris where you're sitting out on the street on a corner and there's just people going on in life and always something to look at. We don't really have that anywhere in Nicaragua. I've never found a single place like that. Madagalpa has just a hint of it and I really like going to the coffee shops up there. He didn't have that. And that, was, that and the gymnasiums were huge portions of his lifestyle. And so by those things that he never thought to ask about, never occurred to him that would be different than he was expecting, uh, caused real problems for him in a lot of ways. Uh, he also, um, the, the thing about the modern apartments also hit him quite a bit. I don't think he was really expecting just how different home life and rental life was going to be compared to someplace like Costa Rica, which is not that far away, and it's really easy to get small, modern apartments. Here, it's easy to get large, non-modern apartments for even less money. The prices are fantastic, but what you get is very different. Not that it's not better or worse, it's just very different. The expectations have to be set, and those are all things that caught him off guard. That little bit of visiting would have helped. Now, in his case, one of the things that made this difficult was that he felt he was on a very constrained budget. I don't think it was as constrained as he felt, but emotions drive a lot of decision-making. So he came down and didn't have the financial resources to feel secure in his move. He felt relatively trapped financially. When he found that there were things he didn't like, he just started spending money to try to fix them rather than learning to adapt or learning what it would take to work around those things. And yeah, at some point, maybe that's something you need to do. You need to consider, will you potentially not like the cafe you find? And so you'll do something. He was finding that he felt uncomfortable sitting in the cafe and enjoying the air conditioning because he didn't like to drink his coffee in the cafe. So he would buy food and pretend to eat it and then throw the food away, which was making it super expensive. And that was really, honestly, I think a pretty crazy approach to how to solve that problem, but that's what he was doing. So he was finding the coffee in his mind, getting a cup of coffee was costing him $10. But in reality, he was buying a meal along with some coffee uh, at a really expensive place. He would only go to the most expensive coffee shop because it was the one that was air conditioned and he wanted to sit in the air conditioning. So essentially he was paying $10 to sit in air conditioning and then would drink some coffee afterwards, which I think he liked the coffee, but I don't even know if that was true, right? He was just just paying because he liked the, the habit, the, the custom of sitting in a coffee shop and spending a little bit of time in the air conditioning, something he was used to from other places and he wanted to recreate here and he could, but he was recreating it at an extreme cost because it is not something you do here and he wasn't comfortable with doing it the way that it is done here and he didn't like drinking his coffee inside. So you put those things together and even though from a budgetary standpoint, essentially everything lined up exactly. We went through records that we had had with him of what he should expect for budgets, and they were spot on within 1% or 2%. Basically, everything he needed to live, he was able to purchase for $1,100, which is exactly what he had budgeted. Then he had some other things that he wanted, and he spent money on things he didn't need. And some of this was spending money immediately that he didn't need to spend. Like he bought a scooter in his first few days, long before he had actually made the decision to be permanent. That was really foolish. So he had big expenditures that he had become committed to for no particular reason. I understand that it's nice to have those things, but it really, just taking a taxi for a few weeks would have protected him quite a bit. Just renting a furnished place for one or two months would have protected him quite a bit. Being willing to stay in a hotel for a little bit of time would have protected him from some really dangerous decision making. He also had a problem that the flights into the country were extremely expensive. He didn't have transit through some of the countries that were a bit more uh, cost effective and he was coming from Asia. And so it was just a very long flight path at very high cost. And some of the things that caught him is he got stuck outside of Nicaragua in South America for a bit of time because they needed uh, yellow fever vaccines and other things. I can't remember all the things that he needed, but he had to spend weeks in high cost locations, 
spending loads of money that he hadn't uh, planned on uh, simply because his flight path took him through places that he had not accounted for. And maybe he couldn't have accounted for, maybe not his fault, but those you always have to be prepared for those surprises. So he started kind of on the wrong foot with a lot of money being spent, a lot of time lost, all in the process of getting here. And that made it a little bit harder. And he did really well finding an apartment really quickly, got a great price on a big space, but it didn't fit his needs. And he was so anxious to get into a place that I don't think he took time to shop around. And instead of getting something that was quite practical, he spent a little bit more money to get something that felt like a better deal. And it was in an empirical sense, but from a practical sense of what made sense for him, he was overspending and then having to accommodate for it. Now, I'll give a great example of this. He had looked at one house for $180 a month, another apartment for $180 a month, and then a third house for $200 a month. The one that was $200 was definitely the better deal. It was in a quieter neighborhood, really safe area, beautiful place, a lot going for it, a lot of space. But he specifically didn't want a lot of space. So he paid extra by $20 a month, which is hardly tragic under normal circumstances, but it's a noticeable amount. That's about 12% extra over what he needed to pay for spaces that were still too large for him. The smallest place, the apartment with only two bedrooms, was actually still physically overkill for him and probably would have been a much better choice for everything. Easier to furnish, easier to deal with, easier everything, and lower cost. But he got this bigger place and didn't want it to be so large. So to make it smaller so that he had the option of air conditioning it, he had walls built to enclose the space that he would live in and leave the rest of it as essentially abandoned. That was fine. Like uh, quite often you can do that. He spoke to the owners, made an agreement, but he spent quite a bit of money, like probably not more than a thousand dollars, but on a really tight budget that adds up pretty quickly and did all this work to modify his house, but it wasn't his house. It was a rental. So the money was not an investment in any way. It was just lost money on a rental that honestly he didn't like from the very first day, but he committed to for some reason, mostly because he was being driven by emotions. He was so anxious to move in that it made him act quite irrationally. And one bad decision led to another. And that's a danger you need to look out for. Are you going to put yourself into a position where you're going to start reacting emotionally? Then you need to step back and say, whoa, this is my life. These are life plans. I need to make sure I'm acting logically because this is a spot where you could accidentally spend a lot of money. In the end, he did manage to make the modifications. But of course, because he was being so driven by impatience, he hired the first person he could get a hold of, didn't go with someone that he knew, that anyone knew, that anyone could reference. The work didn't go as smoothly as planned. He was very frustrated by that, felt that he was being ripped off and gringo priced. He was just unhappy with the entire experience. And then he had to have air conditioning installed and working. He didn't check to get 220 electrical, was impatient and didn't wait for that, ended up paying too much money for that, put in air conditioning that didn't make sense. And part of his problem was he wanted to air condition his entire space, which is not a way that Nicaraguans do things. So nothing was designed around this. So it was super inefficient, didn't work very well, and just didn't go as planned. Uh, and basically, he converted a three-bedroom house into a studio apartment, which, again, is fine, but from a financial perspective, makes absolutely no sense. Had he gone with the first apartment, he could have simply closed off the second bedroom or used it as some kind of storage or allowed it for guests or whatever and treated it as a one-bedroom apartment with no extra cost, simply closed the door, and that would have been that. And he could have air-conditioned that entire thing with a single air-conditioning unit relatively easily. He would have would have put in a relatively big one, or he could have chosen to go with two smaller ones and air-condition the bedroom and the rest of the apartment separately, which could be a little bit more cost effective unless you're just moving back and forth all the time, in which case it's not. He was not working from home. He was retired. So it didn't matter about having a working space or anything like that. That wasn't in his accommodations. All he needed was an air conditioned space where he could uh, cook for himself at home, eat uh, in front of the TV and relax. And then he liked to spend time going to the gym. Uh, and going to the coffee shop. But that was pretty much what he wanted to do. So with those things, he found that the way that he approached it, instead of going with a practical low-cost choice, it was still low-cost, but it was a completely impractical choice, and that ate up a lot of money. And of course, furnishing the place because it was larger and strange was more expensive than it needed to be as well. So there was a lot of just not being happy and working with what was available and taking a really odd approach where he was investing a lot of permanent money getting a scooter right away, modifying walls in a house that didn't make sense for him, uh, jumping into an apartment way too quickly. All those things just didn't add up to be a good way to do a plan for relocation. And it ended up biting him. Within a few weeks, he found that he was not adjusting well. 
He had not accommodated the most important factor, which was he had no affinity for the culture. At no point was he making any friends. He didn't speak the language. He thought that, I think, because he had lived in Thailand and Costa Rica, where there's loads of English speakers, both expats and locals, who, who are their part of the infrastructure, people who make money by working with expats. Uh, there's English speakers all over the place. But here in Nicaragua, there isn't. So he very quickly found that he had no social life. He had nowhere that he could go. People didn't want to hang out with him. He didn't like the things that Nicaraguans do uh, for nightlife life, live music and dancing, which a lot of people like, but some people like just staying home and watch Netflix. That's fine, but you have to be aware that the kind of nightlife that a lot of people like may not exist in a new country. So that's a reason that we say you got to spend some time and really get to know it because little things like that, that yeah, we tell you about, but it's hard to picture what does that really mean? What does a night out of going to Via Via and listening to a live band? We did this literally last night. Okay, last night it wasn't live band. It was it was trivia night. So they have a DJ and uh, um, Dayling doing trivia. So we did that. And then I came home. I had work to do, but uh, everyone else that we were with, they went out from there to Geckos, where there's some dancing and a live cumbia band. And that's just what you do. And you sit around and you drink and you dance. And that's the Nicaraguan thing. And we don't do it every night, but you could do it every night. And that's what the nightlife is like here. If you love that, this is going to be such a hit for you. If you don't like it, that's fine. If you don't need that kind of group nightlife thing as part of your regular rotation. But if you need to go out with your group of friends every night and you want to fit in with Nicaraguans, then it's going to be tough to find a way to do that if you don't enjoy the live music, the dancing, the cumbia bands, uh, 23 bar and places like that with the more reggaeton dancing. There's a limited number of things that you can do. And of course, you can go to the beach and hang out. It's a little bit more expensive. But there they're going to do a lot of the same things as well. This is what Nicaraguan culture is like. And so if it works well for you, it's going to be a slam dunk. If it doesn't work well for you and you're not happy just staying home and watching TV, but you want to go out and meet people and get a social group, you're going to have a hard time. And this is where it fell into a problem for him. He didn't really have anything else going on. And so he was really hoping that he would go out, meet some people, make friends and hang out with people. But at no point did he speak to anyone. At no point did he put himself in a situation where he would meet new people. And that just left him very lonely. And even though we tried to take him out with us, he would go and say, ah, I don't like the live music and leave. I don't want to go dancing and leave, which is fine. But even when he had an opportunity to hang out with people, he would pass it up because it wasn't things he enjoyed. But even if he did go and do it, he would still have the challenge of he didn't speak Spanish. And so whether it was wanting to take uh, someone out on a date or just making new friends, just having a conversation over beers were all things that were very difficult for him because there just aren't any English speakers to run into on any scale. So you put these things together and there's a few key mistakes that I think we have to analyze here. One is that, and there's good reason why he did it this way, but it was such a risk is he didn't come and get to know the country at all. Not even a cursory exploratory mission. Two, I think there was something driving him to get out of the country he was in and some underlying factors that created some problems that we don't know about. I'm sure the, the fact that he was looking to move somewhere when he kept talking about how great the place he was coming from, I don't know if he was being kicked out. I don't know if he had run out of funds. I don't know what it was, but something made the places he was living no longer accessible to him. And so he was coming to Nicaragua, I feel like kind of in a panic, creating some of the emotional stress, creating some of the sense of urgency, and that creates problems as well. So something to be aware of. Of. Uh, I think that um, he had very poor expectation settings. He didn't look into the things that were most important for him. For most of us, we would look into something like the gym and say, you know, oh, that's not what I was expecting, right? Um, um, Eric Peterson from Generic Expats, uh, he's really big on using the gym at different places that he goes. He does a lot of videos from different gyms around South America. And I'm sure when he was here in Nicaragua, he probably could make you a video of well, the gyms are not exactly what I like to go to, but you know, they still have weights and they still have machines and you can still work out, but it may not be the experience that he's excited about. I'm sure that's true. It's unlikely that the gyms here are something that he'd be like, yes, these are the gyms to go to. No, I bet not. Right. And I did a, a video on why the gyms are so expensive here, but they do exist. Most of us would say, oh, that's a small negative, but it's a small part of our life and not something that would make us unhappy or happy with a place that we're living in. Very few people would be that affected. But for him, this was a huge portion of his life. And so that it was something that was unexpectedly a letdown really hit him hard and the coffee shop thing as well. Those things combined with the not being in a position, he hadn't learned Spanish, wasn't interested in the lifestyle, hadn't thought through any of the things that were actually his lifestyle 
which of course, again, a visit would really quickly have taught him about. Jimmy was just here and managed to check on all those kinds of things in a matter of 72 hours. Now, should he have done two weeks? Yeah, but he'll be able to, you know, he made a lot of quick determinations in that time and he's pretty flexible. If you're less flexible, you really need to make sure that you check those things, even if it's very hard for you to do you need to do something or understand that you're just gonna live with whatever you're ending up with and you have to be able to make yourself happy with that. Some people can, some people can't. So being aware of your own emotional state is really important. That's my breakdown of what he did wrong uh, combined with, and again, had things worked out, had he been able to get over the negatives then all of his investment, his huge, like building the wall, getting the scooter, all those things would have been sensible. And we'd have said, wow, how brave of you to have made that commitment early on when you didn't have proof it was going to work for you. And you just, you took that leap and you went in wholeheartedly and it was great. Had he succeeded, we'd have been praising those decisions. Because he failed, we point to them as he made the risk bigger and bigger and bigger. And he ended up failing, I think in less than two months. I think it was about six weeks. Maybe I have a bad memory of how long it was, but it was not very long. He got in, went through this entire life cycle of trying it out, discovering he really didn't like it, going from very happy when he first arrived to being very upset by the time he was leaving. And each little thing just kept adding on and adding on. And because there weren't big successes happening along the way, he wasn't making friends. He wasn't going out and doing anything fun. He was just sitting alone, moping and feeling like he was spending too much money, which was not true. We kept checking his budget and he was right on target. Everything that he spent beyond his budget was purely because he was just wanting to spend money. He would buy three dinners at a time and then just pick from three different restaurants, like really, really exp expensive affluent things, throwing money around like crazy. So that was causing his budget to be higher than it should be. But a normal person eating what he was eating, the volume that he was eating, eating from the places he was eating, going to the places would have spent far less, right? Like I said, with a cafe, he would buy food he wouldn't eat and throw it away because he just wanted to appear like he was buying food so that he would feel more comfortable sitting in the cafe. Not doing those things would have dramatically lowered his expenditures and made it a lot more affordable for him. So we kept showing him that the place was even cheaper, not by much, but just a little bit cheaper than we had shown that it was going to be. At the end of the day, I think proper expectation settings, a curtailing of emotional responses, and slightly better planning or understanding what it means to move would have helped a lot. But nothing was going to make Nicaragua the right choice for him. He was simply going to the wrong place. He had that mentality that the place he was moving to needed to adapt to him instead of him adapting to the place he was moving. So he really needed to carefully select a place that automatically met his needs without really any major effort. And there's a lot of people like that. And there's nothing wrong with that being who you are. But if that's who you are, it's good to identify that. It's going to make places like Thailand and Costa Rica a lot more accommodating, assuming you're coming from the West, as opposed to Nicaragua, which is going to be a place where chances are you're going to need to do a lot of adapting. If you're someone who's very flexible and you're interested in having, some of us actually want a place that we have to adapt to. It's part of the fun. It's part of the learning. It's part of the personal growth. It's part of the, just the adventure of the whole thing. Or maybe you don't find that the place you're coming from is where you fit naturally and you're looking for an experience that's a bit different than what you're used to, then someplace like Nicaragua is going to work out really excellent for you, assuming it's the right place. You still have to like what you're adapting to, of course. Now, in this particular case, the person we're talking about was not coming from North America. He was from Asia. He had not come from the part of Asia that uh, that he came directly from. He was originally from a different, completely different part of Asia, but he was coming from a wholly different background, which I think led to even more difficulty here that it was uh, all so much less than he was expecting, so completely different than what he was used to, when I think he had a certain expectation that there was going to be a certain familiarity that he had experienced in Thailand and Costa Rica and then found that it wasn't here, quite to his surprise. I think that those little things he was so confident couldn't possibly be as different as they actually were, ended up being the things that were just wildly different. So I really encourage you to think about some of these items and to see how they apply to you and make sure that you're doing good planning doing good research, uh, and being in a good mental state to prepare to make a move if relocation is the thing for you. Uh, whether it's something you're looking at doing today or far into the future, whether it's Nicaragua or somewhere else, these are good uh, skills that you should have or approaches that you should use. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. Of course, if you've got questions, write down there, scroll down, ask away. We're really good about responding here. And if you would be so kind as to send in a video question, the information is in the show notes. Super easy. Just take your cell phone, record your Yourself, send in your questions. I love putting you guys on the show and answering that way. Super fun. Uh, we will be doing the 
we always do the live streams on a regular basis. That's a fun way to engage with us as well. Of course, like and subscribe, all that stuff. If you'd like to support the channel directly, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, I'll see all of you tomorrow.